What if you did not have access to a grocery store? You only had access to a dollar store. Dollar Tree to be specific, and it's a Dollar Tree with no refrigerated section. If these are your options, can you eat for an entire week with about $15 shopping from shelf-stable items from the dollar store. That is today's challenge. Let's go shopping and see what we can pick up. In today's grocery shopping trip, I ended up with a total of 13 items for right at about $16. So I was a hair over my $15. You could make this a little cheaper, but I wanted to add a few extra ingredients to one of our main dishes. Not necessary, but uh, I thought it would be a little fun. I saw some interesting products at Dollar Tree today. Shelf stable beef crumbles, that was a surprise. I was even able to find full size Betty Crocker cookie mix. I don't even know if I can make it with what I have in the house, <laughs> but I thought it would be a fun snack, like a fun treat snack for the week, especially when, when you are on a budget this tight, it's nice to have some variety in the flavors. This grocery challenge is assuming you do have salt, pepper, and uh, a cooking fat of some kind, oil, butter, margarine, bacon fat, whatever. The world is your oyster. Kick up your heels, paint the town red. <laughs> and I've done a ton of other Dollar Tree challenges, feeding a family from Dollar Tree, or just extreme grocery budget cooking on my channel. I'll leave a full list of those in the description box. If you haven't been around before and you wanna go check those out, I have a lot of them. But anyway, here's the haul and Let's get cooking. I purchased three ingredients for breakfast for the week and then realized when I got home that I mapped it a little bit wrong. <laughs> so I have this package of English muffins. There's only six in here. A week is seven days. I don't know if you knew that. That is brand new information. So that was a big mistake on my part. However, did you hear fasting's good for you? I've heard intermittent fasting's good for you. If you're one of those people, maybe you skip a breakfast. If not, <laughs> Maybe we'll do some kind of leftover situation with everything else. I did get a little peanut butter and I was pleasantly surprised at the ingredients of the strawberry preserves. All it has is sugar, strawberries, pectin, and citric acid. That's what I would use to make jam in my house. I don't like to buy the bagels because there's only four bagels in the package and I don't like the bread because I feel like it tastes a little weird. Bread's not my favorite thing. Anyway, that's breakfast. Let's make it. I personally love English muffins. I love all these little holes. And to bulk up the calories here, I'm gonna put my peanut butter on both sides and eat them individually like toast instead of making a sandwich. And you'll notice I picked up crunchy because my son said crunchy is better than non-crunchy. Are you a crunchy or a smooth? I adore peanut butter. I think it's one of the best things on the planet Earth. And when it comes to jam or preserves, in this case, um, strawberry is the winner. Tell me, what is your favorite jam? This was a breakfast I ate in college all the time. A bagel, an English muffin, toast with peanut butter and jam, just like this. You really can't go wrong. With these random five ingredients I found at Dollar Tree, we are gonna do our best to create a chili of sorts. It started when I saw this huge container of baked beans already cooked, almost two pounds, and these spicy uh, beef crumbles, which was super weird. I thought carrots might be a nice addition, and I got brown rice for some extra fiber and bulk in the meal to serve the chili on top of. So it really is just these four ingredients. I have no idea how this is gonna go, but let's see what we can come up with. Well, it doesn't look great from this angle, but let's get it into this pot and just see what we come up with. This beef does look very heavily seasoned. I actually wonder if this would be good backpacking food. So let's go ahead and add our other two canned ingredients. I'm gonna leave all the liquids in here. One pound, 11 ounce container of beans. Baked beans, yum, I love baked beans. And the carrots. Now let's open our chili packets and one, two packets, all three packets, who knows what we're gonna end up with. Okay, let's start with one packet. I suspect I might need two. Oh, kind of looks like a, <laughs> less like a chili and more like drunken beans, honestly. I added one more packet of the seasoning and one of the carrot cans of water. So that's about 14 ounces of water. Now the lid will go on. I'll simmer this for 
20 minutes. Taste it. Remember, I'm gonna be serving it over rice, so if it's a little heavy on the seasoning, that's okay, because the rice is gonna be pretty unseasoned. I cooked up half of the bag of brown rice and was able to get seven large meal prep containers of the brown rice. I forgot how long it takes to cook brown rice, even in an instant pot. If you do it on the stove, it's like 35 minutes. It uses a lot more water, but the texture is really nice. And because I still have half of this bag left, I have an idea for breakfast, maybe for the last day or two. Stay tuned for that. But I'm gonna dish up my chili slash beans <laughs> on, on my rice here. And what's great about these meal prep containers, once they're done and the lids are on, you can freeze them and pull them out one by one. So there's no worry about things going bad. It's an excellent thing to meal prep. Rice, um, beans, chili, they freeze beautifully to pull out later. Are you even cooking if you don't drop some on the counter? That's so true. I can't wait to show you our delicious snack for the week and um, kind of a hack on uh, breakfast that I learned from my dad actually when I was a kid. We had it quite often, so let's go check those out now. With the leftover cooked brown rice, there are two things that you can do with it. I'm only gonna demo one of them because I don't have the ingredients for the other. The other is rice pudding. It's a delicious breakfast, snack, dessert, whatever, but it does need eggs and milk, and I don't have either one of those. Over here in my pot, I have some butter melting. You could use any fat. I like the flavor of the butter quite a bit. An avocado oil with a really mild flavor will also work, but I just want this melted, and we are going to mimic kind of like an oatmeal or a grit. What is a grit anyways? So I do have over here some brown sugar. I'm also going to add, in fact, I'll add that right now to my butter as it's melting so it can dissolve all the way. I have two spoonfuls, just cereal spoonfuls of the brown sugar and I just want this to kind of like melt into my butter so you're not chewing on grains of sugar. So as soon as this is all combined, my rice will go in. Ooh, that's a little much. If you accidentally pour too much cinnamon, you can just stir it all together, it'll be fun. So if you get tired of the English muffins, rice oatmeal. <laughs> Rice meal. <laughs> Sometimes Dollar Tree has full size products in varying items and some of those are cereal and baked goods. So I was very excited to find this Betty Crocker, what is obviously a Halloween motif um, and it's past Halloween. So even though the mix itself isn't like expired or past the best buy date, I'm not savvy. They're not gonna be able to sell Halloween products very well when it's about Easter time. So places like Dollar Tree will pick these up at a fraction of the cost and then try and sell it. So I am gonna be using a half a stick of softened butter. Of course, margarine will work as well. That is cheaper and water. I'm just gonna follow the instructions on the back and see what we come up with. This tiny, tiny <laughs> little ball of dough is supposed to make 24 cookies. I think I'm actually maybe going to have to measure these. I, I can't believe how little dough this, how, how is this supposed to make 24 cookies? Okay, I'm gonna use this, but maybe only half. It's about half, I'm not sure. Well, I got 20, but they're real, real little. Real, real small, 20 itty bitty cookies on this normal size baking dish. So time to bake for 10 minutes, and then we get to put on eyeballs. Hey, these spread out a little more than I would have liked. That's a sign of too much butter or fat right there. But now that these are out, half of them are supposed to get these googly eyes, which my kids would think is hilarious. How, how far do I need to push those in? Like pretty far? Because I don't want their eyeballs falling out. It's a lie! Oh my gosh. If you love googly eyes as much as I do, like this video if you haven't done that yet. I think googly eyes belong on everything. Instructions say to squeeze the pouch for 10 seconds. Do not microwave. I think I'm going to assemble in this because once the marshmallow filling is on, they have to sit for 30 minutes. So, and then I can store them in this for the week, which is great. And I ended up with 20, so I can definitely have a minimum of two cookies per day. And as someone who loves cookies, I love that as a concept. I have no idea if that's the right amount. And then eyeball cookie on top. 
So they definitely don't look <laughs> like the picture. The picture has way, way more filling. Here they are. And because I ended up with 10 total cookies, that means four of the, no, three of the days, I think I get two cookies each. Did I do that math right? I at least get one cookie and then a couple days I get two cookies. But technically there's two cookies in each cookie. So maybe it's four cookies. It's really sweet. Isn't my favorite cookie mix by any means? If you're desperate, it'll work. Would I recommend a different option? Probably. Now I also going to finish this cookie? Also probably. <laughs> For most of my lunches, we are going to put together a pasta salad. And with not very many <laughs> fresh ingredients to pick from, or uh, zero as it were, this is kind of what I have. You don't have to add things really just doing some pasta and Italian dressing would be totally fine. But I thought banana peppers would take it up a notch. I thought the pepperoni addition would be really delicious. And because I want everything to stay kind of fresh, we're only gonna do half the box of pasta for the first half of the week and cook the rest in the second half of the week. So let's get started. This is about 10 ounces of pasta, cooked, drained, and one cup of the Italian dressing. I'm gonna start with that and add my chopped up pepperoni and probably half of this banana pepper rings with some of the juice. I'll chop these as well. Stir it around and we'll see where we are. I think it needs a little more dressing so I'll add another sprinkle of the banana peppers juice and about half of that so I can save the rest of it for my other batch later this week. Now I would have loved to add some broccoli, some chopped carrots, and maybe some chunks of cheese to this. But like I said, the Dollar Tree I went to didn't have any of those things. But the flavor of this is really tasty. So now all I need to do is separate it out into meal prep containers. I'll do three meal prep containers and we will be good. Well, I considered that to be kind of a rough challenge. Eating from Dollar Tree in a store that does not have a refrigerated section on such a low budget was really challenging. And my suspicions at, is that it's going to continue to get more challenging as Dollar Tree has recently stated that they will be raising the prices of many of their items to $1.75. This is so crazy. If that's the case, I think I'm gonna be headed to Walmart and Winco instead of a place like Dollar Tree. When it was a dollar, you could get some really stellar deals. And at $1.25, the deals are gonna be fewer and further between. I hope that was the right grammar. Grammar is the greatest joy in life, don't you find? If you need food for your family, I don't think anyone should ever go hungry, ever. So if you wanna reach out to your local community for all of their food programs that they offer. A lot of them don't have income requirements. You can just go and pick up food. I found better success in smaller communities than really, really big cities, but you can always reach out to your public library, the sheriff's office, the school district. We'll typically know about all of those local programs. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next video. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.